All right, a good morning, good afternoon, and even good evening for those of you joining us on the other side of the world. Welcome to today's Star Rocks virtual office hour. This is our first virtual office hour and we're glad to have everyone here in the room with us. So my name is Beryl. I serve on the marketing team as our data and I'll be your host for today's discussion. You'll hear about updates on Star Rocks 2.4 and you will get your questions answered by Star Rocks expert. Speaking of Star Rocks experts, we have Sida Shen, Product Manager at Seller Data, Alan Lee, Star Rocks PMC, and also Rachel Bador, Solution Architect at Seller Data. If you are on our Slack channel, you are probably already familiar with these names. If you are not, please feel free to join our Slack channel. Um, now, before we jump into things, a few more, a few small housekeeping items. First, the office hour is being recorded, and we'll be making it available after the call. Second, if you haven't submitted any questions on the Slack, please post your questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, and we'll go through as many questions as we can. And if we don't get to your question, we'll do our best to follow up with you after the office hour. But feel free to reach, us to us, uh, reach out to us directly should you have any more questions after this. And all right, with that out of the way, let's kick off the uh, conversation. First, I will hand it over to Sida to tell us all about Star Rocks 2.4. Um, hey, hey guys, uh, this is Sida. Uh, I am a product manager at uh, Seller Data. And uh, so today I'm going to uh, talk about what's new in the version 2.4 release. And uh, 2.4.0 was released a few weeks ago. And uh, we already have 2.4.1 release yesterday. So, um, uh, feel free to try it out and uh, uh, so let's get started uh, so first um, uh, let's go through what is star rocks right star rocks is a high performance uh, analytical database and uh, it features uh, a cost-based optimizer and uh, has an mpp architecture and uh, it is fast uh, it is any query you throw at it uh, is supposed to uh, uh, get the result back in just a few seconds. Uh, it is fresh, uh, always provides fresh, uh, fresh insight um, through, uh, by always keeping your data fresh. It supports uh, real-time update, real-time delete operations uh, while not having any impact on query performance. And um, it's flexible, right? Uh, so Starbucks has exceptional uh, drawing performance. So you don't need to model your data into flat tables means that you don't know more like pre-joining, right? So with Star Rocks, you can model your data, whatever you, you, you like. And um, whether it's by Snowflake schema or Star schema, it uh, provides a flexibility, okay? So uh, let's jump into uh, some of the 2.4 feature highlights. And um, the first part is associated with uh, data lake analytics. So let's first go over uh, what is data lake analytics means for uh, Star Rocks. So Star Rocks, you can you know, store your data into your instances, into your BEs and have really good performance. And, but Star Rocks can also be used as an execution engine and to directly um, query data from data lake uh, meta stores such as uh, Apache Hive, Apache Iceberg and Apache Hootie without actually migrating your data uh, from those systems into Starbucks local storage, right? And uh, before actually 2.3, uh, that was done by creating an external table, which means that uh, you would need to actually write the create table uh, script or query uh, in Starbucks uh, to actually do the query, right? And in 2.3, we released uh, the catalog feature, which means that uh, you can create a catalog for those uh, external data sources. And um, you can directly query data without um, actual writing the create table um, statement within Star Rocks, right? And uh, for version 2.3, we supported Apache Hive. And in version 2.4, we added support for Apache Hootie and Apache Iceberg. And this is how the, uh, the kind of the hierarchy works uh, within Star Rocks. So Star Rocks and uh, Catalogs 
and database and tables and columns after that. Okay. And uh, the, sex, uh, the second feature I wanted to highlight is um, a compute node that was released in version 2.4. Um, to talk about this, we probably need to um, take a look at our the Starox architecture. So Starox has a tightly coupled uh, uh, storage and execution engine, right? Uh, and uh, Starox is able to scale. So with this architecture, the, the data can be migrated or uh, shuffled automatically when you add a new node, but it's still a stateful um, node, right? So moving the data is very expensive. Although this architecture provides really good performance, uh, scaling-wise, although it's automatic, uh, the, 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 the speed is uh, unsatisfactory, right? And for version 2.4, we released a stateless compute node. And this compute node does not uh, persist any data. So the only job this compute node does is to query data. So because it doesn't persist any data on it, so you can evict uh, the compute node at any time and bring it up at any time. And um, the compute node can automatic, uh, can instantly uh, start the querying job, right? And this compute node is designed to be scaled uh, at speed. So it can be scaled within seconds. And um, this is really useful for uh, data lake analytics because uh, the workflow can be sometimes high, and uh, the workload can be sometimes high and sometimes low. So we would like to think that um, the most saving comes when the system is idle. So when the system is idle, the ability to actually turning off an instance will save tremendous amount of uh, resource, right? And CN is designed exactly to do this. And uh, so this is the CN node by itself. And we also paired it up with a Starbox operator, Kubernetes operator, to actually deploy the compute node into your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and we can use HPA policy to, the Kubernetes HPA policy to achieve uh, automatic um, horizontal scaling, right? And, and uh, the next part is materialized view. And uh, in version 2.4, we released a new kind of materialized view that we would like to say it's um, built for data modeling, right? So what it does is basically you have data ingested into Star Rocks. And uh, this materialized view is being updated uh, asynchronously uh, in the background. And it's done by doing a insert overwrite uh, insert override statement. So basically doing full refresh of your partition by partition, right? And uh, this materialized view can be updated uh, periodically or manually by hand. And uh, it, it will be very useful for modeling your data within Star Rocks instead of you know, uh, create a new table and insert into that table. And you need to set a Chrome job to do that you know, every some time. And, uh, this kind of materialized view does that job for you, okay? And uh, the next feature is FQDN, uh, which is called fully qualified domain name. So before 2.4, version 2.4, um, the sole identifier, the identifier for BE and FE nodes are IP address. But in some cases, IP address can, can change, right? And now we support to use a domain name or the combination of uh, host name and port uh, as a unique identification for B and FE to kind of solve that issue. Uh, this is especially useful in uh, Kubernetes environment. And this is exactly what we used uh, to build um, our new Saros uh, Kubernetes operator, okay? And uh, because we don't really have that much time and this is, um, and this is only the tip of the iceberg for uh, version 2.4. And if you want to see the complete uh, uh, 2.4 release note, 2.4.0 release note, you can search it on the release tag 2.4.0. And 2.4.1 is released as well, I think two days ago. And you can check it out as well. And also we have um, release plan for version 2.5. 
Uh, version 2.5 is uh, targeted to be released uh, some, uh, sometime next month, mid of next month. And the RC version is expected to be released uh, by the end of this month. So if you're interested in what's in version 2.5, uh, you can go to this issue and uh, that is our release plan. Um, so that's all I have. Uh, thank you. Thank you very awesome. much. Thanks for going through that. Yeah. Thanks, staff, for the overview of the future highlights. Um, okay, now it's our Q&A sessions. First, let's go through the questions we've collected on the Slack channel. And the first one is, how can I get started with doing my own benchmark analysis on Star Rocks? Um, who want to take this question? Um, I can take this. So mm -hmm. if you check out our blog, we've done some benchmarks already and we have like, even SSB, the benchmark, um, you can actually like look through our docs and we have this whole way of doing it that's set up for you with a script. It's really easy. Um, and then you can see the other ones like TPCH on our blog. Um, we're currently working on TPCDS. So if you're interested in that, send a note on Slack and we can send you um, a message and then we'll also be publishing those results shortly. Great, good to hear. Um, so the second one is, how about the Star Rocks performance versus Presto Spark Trino? Um, Alan, do you want to cover this topic? Or yeah, else? we have been testing using the TPCDS and in one, one terabyte I will be happy performance, but then we have do a performance benchmark between the Star Rocks and the Presto and the, the Star Rocks. We have to show it well. We have to three to, three to five times during the benchmark test. Three to five times? Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Um, so the let's move into the next question. So does the Starrock have Kubernetes operator? I think Sida just covered mentioned that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um yeah, yeah, I briefly mentioned uh, in the in the 2.4 in the in the in the presentation there. So uh, right now we actually have two kinds of uh, uh, Kubernetes operator. So if you go to our um, Staros Kubernetes operator GitHub repo, and there are two branches. One is the main branch and one is called uh, the, I think it's called the compute node group branch. So the compute node group branch, uh, what's in that is actually what was um, released with version 2.4. And uh, for that Kubernetes operator, uh, it deploys uh, compute node only compute node into uh, as a custom resource into your Kubernetes environment. And now we're you we're working on a brand new uh, Kubernetes operator for Starox, and that uh, actually can put FE, B, and as well as CN, so everything into Kubernetes. And um, the the testing has been good and all of the function works. And now we're working on uh, containerized version 2.4.1 and pushing that to Docker Hub. And after we do that and um, we can all try it and test. Nice. Um, so the next question, um, can my data stay in S3 or do I need to ingest it into a disk? Um, Rachel, do you have any? Yeah, I can take this. I think sort of mentioned this a little bit, um, but yeah, you can do either. So you mm -hmm. can have um, data in an S3 or a data lake and then like keep that data in the data lake. So you wouldn't need to move it or you mm -hmm. can actually migrate it into our storage engine. So you have two options and you can do kind of a combination of both to serve the needs of your architecture, or your use case. Sounds great. That, that, that's kind of like answer our follow-up question as well. So we can move to a, the, the other question. Uh, so does Starrock support AWS, GCP, Azure? Uh, Alan? Yeah, now we have to 
toward the South service in the AWS, but uh, if you have some uh, virtual machine like EC2 in the GCP and uh, that is okay, but uh, the cloud service is not ready for GCP and for uh, AWS. And uh, I will, we will to move the, the multi-cloud environment to, to from, for our for our service SaaS service and in the less in the in the last year and now you can use the SaaS service in the AWS. Yeah. Cool. So SaaS you can use AWS and then you can also do the marketplace, right? Where you like click a button and it helps you with the deployment. Or it was um it's like an AWS quick start. Yeah. Yeah. If you're interested, check out our um, quick start on AWS Star Rocks Quick Start. Uh, also, let's moving on to the next question. Does Starrock require Zookeeper? Oh, no. No, we don't need the Zookeeper. We will to implement a concerns protocol in our FE. We don't need to uh, outside service level Zookeeper. And uh, the next one, what's the largest scale production case um, for Starrocks? Oh yeah, uh, the larger service uh, user case now you we are we we use in, in the tension the WeChat video it will be have now will have two hundred load every load have what three uh, have thirty two calls and two thousand and fifteen five fifteen five fifteen seven um GB date memory and now they will be extended to to have a traffic to for the, the spring festival or the new, new year of China, and they will be extended to 1,000 loads in the last month to have tested to traffic the new year. Yeah. I can um add on to that as so for people in the US who don't use WeChat, WeChat is like a really popular like app overseas that people use to text. And then they also, I mean, we're also using the uh, video platform is like TikTok, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's like a TikTok alternative that you can use within WeChat. So this is a huge company overseas. It's not as popular in the US, but just to give you guys a sense of scale. Yeah, yeah I think WeChat, WeChat, WeChat has yeah. something like uh, like a billion plus daily active user, right? Yeah, the WeChat will maybe have a monthly, the monthly 11, 11 billion users every month. Yeah. Okay. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of people. Uh, okay, next one. Does Starrock support semi structure like JSON map uh, struct? Oh yeah, yeah, I can take that. I'm working on this. So, um, so yeah, so for for JSON is uh, supported across the board. So with uh, internal tables and uh, for for external tables as well. And for struct and map, uh, I think in version two point five. Uh, we're going to support struct and map for uh, Hive external tables or Hive um, external data source. And, uh, and for others and uh, internal table, we're going to support them in the future. And I think some structured data is really important, especially for, for data, lake, data lake analytics kind of scenarios, right? I think for, for our users, um, at least the users I talk to, um, our user view Lake as a place that, you know, they can just dump every kind of data in and uh, expect it to work, right? And uh, using it, using data lake versus using database is really different. And semi-structure is really prevalent or we see them a lot in data lake scenarios. And this is the one point and we're going to to be putting a lot, lot of resource in, as well as you know, um, really our focus for the next, uh, for the next few, um, uh, few versions. So, um, so how? Uh, so the next, next, next question is: How do I choose a memory configuration for my cluster? Um, I can grab that one. So that's something that you can kind of figure out as you continue, as you start to use it, because it's largely based on like your use case and the type of queries that you're issuing, but as some general guidance, um, like a scan, if you're doing a lot of scanning queries, so like you're summing an entire column over a table, that's a memory intensive 
query, right? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and if you're doing a lot of joining, but not a lot of scanning, that would be more CPU intensive queries. So when we're designing the architecture for Star Rocks, these are things that we're keeping in mind. So a lot of it has to do with your data profile and your query profile. Um, a standard like ratio for a starting point um, that we like to use is if we were to do something like um, it would be like four CPUs per eight gigabytes of memory, and then that would be the ratio. So you would go up from there. But again, it depends on your query profile and the types of queries and data that you're working with. Thanks, Rachel, for answering the question. Hey, Beryl, can I ask a <laughs> yeah. question? I was just thinking of. So for Sita, so for the um, for compute nodes uh, with the Kubernetes operator, like. Is it possible that we could do, could, can you run Star Rocks on only compute nodes or do you have to have a BE node? Um, because compute node doesn't really persist any data, right? If you only have, if you if you have a data lake, meta store uh, below, you can only run 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 compute node. Okay, and okay, cool. Without having any BE node, yeah. But if okay. you need to like, like, you know, if you don't have a data lake system, and then you have to have a B to store data. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thanks for clearing that up. Um, let's move to the next question. So, what's the roadmap um for Star Rocks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that, that's a that's a good question. And um, I think a roadmap I can break that up into kind of like two parts. And the first part is more like shorter term and basically targeting for version two point five. Uh, which the RC version is supposed to come out in two months, uh, two weeks, I'm sorry. And uh, the official uh, official release, the stable release is in a month, roughly. And in version 2.5, we're going to keep working on, we'll keep working on data lake analytics and uh, strengthen Starbucks in that field. And we're going to have support for struct and the back data type for uh, Apache Hive. And we're going to support catalog for Delta Lake. And uh, we're going to add uh, kind of um, cache, like a block cache for, um, for data lake analytics. So like a, like a query, uh, like a cache for the lake, right? Because the lake is used like object storage and um, we cache some of the data into uh, B or C and local storage. And um, also, um, we're going to have support for uh, for like POSAR for routine load. So we're going to support uh, uh, ingesting data from POSAR uh, in real time. And we're going to have a query cache and a lot more. Uh, version 2.5 is actually honestly a, a really big uh, release. Um, it has a lot of like cool features. So if you guys want to check it out, um, we have a release plan in the uh, in the issue page. In one of the issues, you just type um, search for release plan and release plan for two point five is gonna pop up, and you can see what what will version two point five include. And for longer term, right? And uh, we're looking to release a big version next year. Uh, we're targeting for sometime in the February, uh, version 3.0. And that version is going to feature uh, a lot of like architectural change. And um, first of all is we're going to release a, we're planning to release a completely uh, uh, storage and compute separated kind of architecture for Star Rocks. So basically what that does is um, we take data persistence from local storage uh, into like more scalable and cheaper object storage and um, to achieve like um, storage and compute uh, separation, right? And also um, a lot of other features like uh, materialized view and we're looking to strengthen that um, in the version, in version 3.0. So we're going to support some streaming operators, like streaming joins. And uh, so the materialized view can be updated incrementally. So no more like full refresh uh, to basically up the performance and make it more like real time, right? And, um, and there are many more um, uh, things we want to do. 
uh, even version 3.0, but I think that's that might be story for another day. <laughs> Rachel and Alan, do you have anything to add to that? Or? Um, I might just ask a follow-up question. So you mentioned that we can use object store uh, or like the plan is that we're going to add object store into that would be different than than using a data lake. Can you kind of explain yeah. the difference? So, yeah, so great question. So um, so for data lake is actually you're you're storing like for example, like for for Apache High, right? Um you're a store you're storing Apache, you're using like Apache High tables and you're storing files in ORC or parquet file format, right? And in version 3.0, the 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 architecture we're developing, um, we're actually storing like Star Rocks file format in um, in S3 or in S3 compatible ob object storage, oh. and uh, we're using Star Rocks own table format. So it's lake. It's not the lake we we use to we we, we talk about. We all, we often talk about like Hive or Iceberg. So Starox itself can be viewed as a lake. It's a lake that is scalable and um, as cheap to store, and as well as uh, it provides the same uh, like amazing fast performance as uh, like local store Starox. Cool. Thanks for going through that and clarifying that. Was there anything you wanted to add about the future releases or the roadmap, Alan? Mm, no, there's, uh, I think there's not a lot of work to clarify. Yeah, great. Um, great overview. We believe we can end our um, office hour early. Or do you guys have anything to add before wrapping things up? 2.4.1 is out. I'll be sure to try it out. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to try out to try our uh, latest release. Yep. Okay, so I believe we're gonna wrap it up early for today, and this is um, I I learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else here did as well. Um, of course, if you find yourself with more questions, you can just um, message us on Slack or visit our Star Rocks community site at starrocks.io. And be sure to follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. And also, if you haven't joined our Slack, please join our Slack channel. It's a very active community. We got plenty of folks over there who are interested in helping you, um, you know, get in, get interested, uh, get started with Star Rocks, and learn a whole a lot about how it can best benefit you. Um, and it's also a great way to stay up to date with the latest news on the project. Uh, thanks again for everyone uh, who attended today. And thank you, Sida, Alan, and Rachel for being here and answering questions in our first uh, virtual office hour. And uh, we, um, I'm really appreciate that um, you guys sharing the time with us and have a great day. And we'll see you at our next office hour. So thank take you. care. Bye. Bye. And thanks, Beryl. Thank you. Bye.